Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Hope everybody has enjoyed today's hate watches because this might have been the hate watch of the season. Liverpool stumble, Arsenal fumble, two bottle jobs in the same day. And now Manchester City are top. Obviously, there's a lot more of the season left to go. But we know what Man City are like when they get to this point of the season. When they get top, they stay top. And usually the teams around them falter. And it looks like we've already started. Liverpool were meant to come back and make a big statement after Anfield got turned into Scamfield by Scamacca and Atalanta. And what do they do? They, they lose to a Crystal Palace side with one centre-back. One centre-back. They had a DM. And I think a, a left back or a right back playing in the back three today. And credit to Palace as well, because they defended so well. So well. Some of some of the blocks I saw, they made about four or five game-saving blocks or goal-saving blocks. Also, Liverpool's attack were as meaty as they always are. Defensively, they look shaky again. Van Dijk literally did the Steven Gerrard and slipped. But Robertson saved his ass from what was looking like such a poetic goal. But Liverpool couldn't come back from that one goal deficit against a Crystal Palace side who are notorious for conceding late. I don't know if you remember when we played them. We conceded, we scored two late goals against them. We scored a late penalty against them. And I think they've conceded the most goals after the 90th minute in the entire Premier League this season. Or at least from when I last checked, it was them. So, how they weren't able to break down the door is just a massive indictment on their forwards. Nunes was a waste of money. It's his second season now. And he just doesn't turn up in the big moments. Diaz has had an awful season. Salah. Salah in a title charge. Where are you? Where are you? My Hazard turns up. Every single time Eden turns up when the team needs him. Mo, your team needs you. You're about to leave with one league title. We got two. You have to hold that. But even with Liverpool losing, that wasn't the main event. The main event was those filthy shadow dwellers that live up in North London. The most overhyped squad, consistently overhyped squad in existence. All oh, we have the best defense. All oh, we have the best midfield. All oh, we have the best forwards, but we never win anything. We, 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 we're just all so rans. Revel in what you are, you gooners. You lot are bottle jobs by nature. How many times have we been here? How many times have we been in this situation where you have fumbled the bag? 2008. 2015, um, 2022, um, 2002, or whenever it was, no, not 2002, you lot won it then, I think 2003, whenever you fumbled a massive lead to Manchester United, it was around the early 2000s, someone will let me know in the comment section, but Arsenal have been perennial bottle jobs. That's all we've known them for this century. They wheeled out the prime bottles again for a title charge. And yet again, it's become very poetic. They started well, made a lot of chances, but typical clinical Kai, man. You remember how they told us, oh, we've robbed Chelsea. Oh, we stole Chelsea's best player. Oh, oh, can we pay you more money, Chelsea? Oh, oh, you, you regret selling Havertz now, don't you? Ha ha! Ha ha! <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. That was just yet again a standard Havertz performance. Gets into the right positions. Couple of decent passes here and there. But absolutely no end product. Absolutely no end product. But hey, he's turned the corner. He's turned the corner. He has, he's improved. Arteta has improved him. I've been telling people about Havertz. The only thing that's improved with that bozo is that he's got a little bit stronger. That's it. He's winning a few more duels. That's all. He weren't winning them at Chelsea. He's winning them at Arsenal. What a trophy that is. Nine goals this season and people wanted to put him up for signing of the season shouts just because he doesn't look like an absolute fraud. Well, there you go, mate. There you go. March versus over. We are now back in April. 
If you don't get him cutbacks, if you don't get him headers, you're not getting anything out of him. And to be honest, Saka put a ball on a plate for him to head it into the net early on, and he missed. Typical. Typical. First half was amazing for them. Second half, they just absolutely fell off a cliff. Fell off a cliff. It was awful. And they can't run the whole, oh, we're tired, oh, it, um, we've played a lot of games, BS, when you're playing an Aston Villa side that literally played on Thursday. They, they literally played on Thursday. Had about a day or two to prepare for this game. And they handled it way better than Arsenal. Their game management was superb. They defended well. They knew when to slow down the game. Their transitional play was sensational. Absolutely sensational. Like They were lucky not to be leading in the first half. Ollie Watkins hits the post. Second half, someone else hits the post and the bar at the same time. And then Zinchenko goes walkabouts, as per usual. Left back goes to right back. Declan Rice completely ignores um, Leon Bailey just on the right side of him. And they get hit with a 1-2. Because as soon as it's 1-0, they get hit on the counter again. Ollie Watkins dinks the keeper. And game finished. Game management sucked from Arteta, as per usual. Jesus was poor. Saka had an awful second half again. Where is he? Where is he? The, oh, these two men that you tried to pull up next to Eden Hazard. No, 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 no. Eden Hazard is on a level of his own. Salah can't lace his boots. Saka shouldn't even be in the same room as him. Disgrace. Absolute disgrace. I'd like to say that game gives me a little bit of hope for when we go to the Emirates. But I do have to remember that Pochettino's in charge. I'm not going to say anything too crazy right now. Because I know all my joy in football is going to be evaporated. As soon, as soon as we kick off tomorrow. Because I know what I'm going to see is going to be a mid-table, mid-off. But... Seen as my season's over, I'm going to revel in everybody else's misery. The hater arc is open. And to be honest, we've been doing this all season. We've, we've been hating on everything in sight that isn't Manchester City. So, yeah, this isn't any gimmick that we haven't already been doing. But we're just here to hate. We're here to revel in everybody's misery. And as long as Man City wins the league and... No other English club wins the Champions League. It's all good. We we kind of need Arsenal to win against Bayern for the coefficient, but it's not like we're going to make it into Europe anyway. So I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Coefficient hype when, when we can't even beat the bottom two in the league. Forget all of that. We're just going to celebrate the fact that Arsenal in the mud, Liverpool in the mud. I have a chance to go into the back again pod. This is the only team that won this week. <laughs> Let's go. So, God, please be with my football club. But, yeah, big up to everybody that's locked in. Do not be like Arsenal and Liverpool's forwards and hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And, as always, up the Chelsea. Up the Chelsea.